there are some extraordinary things about this solstice alignment. Um, really, really kind of uh, amazing. So let me kind of illustrate some of the things that I'm seeing that uh, really hit me as uh, most significant. Every 20 years we get an opposition between Saturn and Jupiter. But it just happens to be that right now, the last one is happening in uh, association with this solstice event. And the solstice is when the sun, in, in December, is when the sun is at its furthest southern point. And so right now, when it's at its furthest southern point, we also have Saturn and Jupiter working together through their 20-year cycle, and they're exactly opposite to each other. Not only are they exactly opposite at the time of the solstice, but they're also in a very fortunate, harmonious relationship with uh, the Sun and Pluto. And we'll come back and touch more on, on that in a few. Something else that's noticeable is everything in the uh, part of the sky delineated by the line between Saturn and Jupiter it includes every planet in the sky except uh, Mars. So the, the whole uh, formation, all of the planets together are kind of making a big cup that stretches three quarters or eh, two thirds of the sky. But the line between Jupiter and Saturn is interesting because all of the planets in uh, that formation have a, a peculiar uh, arrangement. What they have is this harmonic spacing. And by harmonic, what I mean is a pattern that is repeating resonantly. And this is something, it's a concept in uh, music. It's also a concept in um, uh, mathematics and engineering. And it's also evident here in, in this uh, formation. So you could think of it another way that we could depict this as the weaving of a line or a serpent up and down in between these as though, you know, or a big helix that would wrap around from Saturn all the way to Jupiter. And at the center of each uh, opening in the helix would be one of these planets. So what else is interesting here is the view view of the sky itself. So what we have here, uh, with everything spread out before us, uh, we have the sun directly together with the heart of the galaxy. The sun at the solstice, the southern solstice, is aligned with the galactic equator. And also pretty close to the point where the uh, center of the galaxy is. Uh, just a just a couple degrees above that that position. So what we can see here with all the planets that are spread out between Saturn and Jupiter, we can see on the uh, eastern side of the Sun we have Venus, Neptune, Uranus, and Jupiter. Just like we could see also depicted in the circular chart. Now, something that's very fortunate, I mentioned before that the angle between the Sun and Jupiter and Saturn is kind of an unusually fortunate or harmonious type of an angle. Um, it's a 120 degree angle from the Sun to Jupiter. So it's a Sun trying Jupiter. Very fortunate. And because Pluto's in there too, we've been having something for months, uh, which is an interesting uh, atmosphere for adventures and for discoveries. And for instance, I'm reminded that in the last uh, couple of months, I think it was right at the end of October, I believe it was October 28th, interestingly, that um, the first commercial, the first successful test of a commercial cold fusion device happened, uh, I believe in Italy, or it was an Italian inventor, I don't remember which. Um, but that, that test occurred on October 28th. So we've had this very nice synergy going on between Jupiter and Pluto. And uh, we're, we're going to have a little bit more of that, fortunately. So that's coming up 
uh, first the Sun will conjoin Pluto about five days after the solstice, and then in, in March, mid-March, uh, Jupiter and Pluto will be exactly trying uh, for the last time in this cycle. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other things here. We have the Sun and Saturn um, working together. Sun, Pluto, and Saturn. So that that's fortunate. That kind of, again, brings about the uh, regenerative energy for karma, for circumstance, for structure. It, it resonates with, uh, with a need for a new life, for a regeneration, for a revivification of, of existing conditions. Also, Saturn is working very nicely here with, uh, with uh, Neptune and Chiron. One of the ways that this resonates for me is Saturn, the planet of structure and karma, is uh, working with the planets of the consciousness of the soul, Neptune and Chiron. And so there's a soul level awareness about the way that karma works, the way that experience works, the way that structure of reality moves and takes form. There's this undercurrent of recognition. And so to me, uh, interestingly, this uh, trine um, kind of kind of really hits it for me about um, uh, a deeper uh, connection for this whole pattern. Because in this whole pattern, we're seeing how all the disparate parts are kind of part of a wave. That's another thing that a harmonic is. It's a, like a standing wave pattern. Well, we can actually see it. And there are all these different interesting standing wave patterns, including in time, including in calendars, the way that we measure time. There are, they tell us about connections and resonances and waves that exist both in our own experience and in the larger experience of our entire uh, near universe. So also, uh, the thing that we should recognize, I think the thing that Saturn and uh, Neptune and Chiron are kind of telling us here, is that what's going on, uh, there's, there's a marvelous uh, synergy that's going on, and it's, it's involving everything. Everything is a participant. Everything is part of what's going on. What's going on is uh, connected with, uh, with everything, with, with consciousness. So bringing consciousness, bringing attentiveness to what's going on is a, is a key. Because what we're also experiencing now is Uranus square Pluto. And this has been 50 years in developing from the mid-60s until this point. So almost almost exactly 50 years. So what we have here is a process that was begun in the 1960s, 65 to 67 specifically for the exact alignments. Something that was started moving and resonating in the 60s has now come to a point of a 90 degree angle. Pluto and Uranus were together in the mid-60s. Now they're 90 degrees apart. So what is it, and what has been developing, and where are we in that cycle? What is it? What's, what's the element of regeneration for, for discovery, for insight, for intuition, for freedom? There's another square happening here, too, and this is a T-square. Um, Venus is basically right in the middle of the opposition, so forming a perpendicular angle to the line between Saturn and Jupiter. And so there's there's kind of some uh, qualities here of disappointment, heartbreak, um, you know, kind of self-indulgent, uh, getting, getting lost in a self-indulgent um, depression. And um, certainly the, the energy of, of heartbreak is here, but there is also a potential for some resolution because Venus isn't going to stay stuck here. There's, there's energy that's moving and going on. So there's a hint here. The square between Jupiter and Venus, there's a relationship with Mars. And this relationship with Mars uh, is very interesting because uh, Venus is square to Jupiter, which means they're 90 degrees apart. 
Mars is bisecting the angle. It's splitting the angle on the other side of the, the, the wheel. It's basically 135 degrees to each of them from Mars, which is interesting because, you know, 135 plus 135 plus 90 is, is a complete circle. So Mars happens to be at the fortunate exact uh, interaction point for Jupiter and Venus. So what what's happening here is something that's really remarkable because after this, we progress into March. And with that comes the last exact trine for Pluto and Jupiter, and it happens to be a grand trine because Mars will be retrograde and exactly 120 degrees to both um, Pluto and Jupiter. And interestingly, Jupiter and Venus will be together in the, in the Grand Trine. So that energy of, um, of abundant life, thriving life, when things are really working together, Venus and Jupiter are in a harmonious uh, relationship, the adventure of life, the adventure of being, uh, the abundance of of, um, of life and thriving and of, and of ecstasy. Uh, life's natural radiance. And so uh, Mars kind of symbolizes the action. Well, what kind of action is in, re is in resonance with the, with the radiance of, of life? Whatever that action is, that's what Pluto is also in harmony with. And so there's a very fortunate uh, uh, experience that unfolds when action is in harmony with the radiance of existence, with the radiance of life. Because then the healing and regenerative potentials of Pluto flow in a truly abundant fashion.